In this week's video, I've got a squeak, <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to fix it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Casey, uh, and this week I'm coming back at you with another 5 minute maintenance tip. What we're doing is replacing the caster fork bearings. Uh, mine are shot from the winter, uh, and so they're squeaking a little bit. And so this one's a little bit more involved than the last one we did, uh, but it's still very doable, and it will change a little bit depending on the kind of chair you have. Uh, but I'll take you through it step by step, and we'll get it done. So the things we'll need for this is first, you can see I've put down uh, towels on my car on my floor. Uh, if you have a workbench or something, obviously you don't need to worry about that. But I've got carpet, and carpet gets dirty, so I put the 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 towels down to protect that. Uh, you'll need a ratchet and with a ratchet head uh, to take the big nut off here uh, and then a hammer and uh, a rag and this is more than just for cleaning. We'll show you what we're going to use this for later uh, and then obviously whoop, replacement bearings. So um, so let's get started and we'll show you what to do. Well, I've got a Performax and the, the Performax is really easy to work on. They keep it simple. There's not a lot of uh, a lot of parts and stuff uh, and so as you can see on the top here of the caster fork bearing housing there's just one big nut that hangs onto the stem that goes down to the caster fork uh, and so for this we're just going to take our ratchet and we're going to take that off you might need to use a little bit of like um, liquid wrench or something you don't need to worry about the, if uh, busting up a, or corroding a, uh, a bearing because you're taking them out anyways so you get that loosened up and the nut off and then the stem comes out the bottom like that there we go now like I said it will it will d differ depending on the type of chair you have and the nice thing is that a lot of the new designs are actually going to more of a sealed compartment so you don't have to worry about this nearly as much uh, my the top of my caster fork housings here are supposed to have little plastic caps on them, but I tend to lose them quite a bit. And then because of that, there's a lot of sand and uh, salt and stuff, especially up here in the winter that gets into these. So my bearings kind of go out, not really often, but a little bit more often than some um, like enclosed ones. Uh, I can show you another time how to do those. It's pretty simple as well, but uh, like tie lights, some of the new quickies have those enclosed caster housings. Uh, and I think Lasher Sport has enclosed caster housings as well. Um, it's a little bit more involved to do those, but still easily done. So this next part can get a little tricky depending on how rusted out and how corroded stuff is. Uh, and I for did forget to tell you, you need some sort of screwdriver or something that will fit into this sleeve here. Um, so on mine, there's a bearing down here on the bottom that fits into a little lip that's on the inside here so it can't go all the way through. And then vice versa, on the top there's one too, and it sits on a little lip uh, in here as well. So these don't have anything that hold them in, but they have ones that hold, uh, or they have that little lip that stops them from going all the way through. Uh, I know some of the quickies and I know the tie lights have a little C-ring in there that actually hold it from coming out. So if you have one of those chairs and you're trying to do this, I would highly recommend getting a C-ring pliers. You can get them at Home Depot or any kind of hardware store but it'll save you a lot of time uh, and a lot of frustration if you get one of those because you can just push it in, squeeze the C-ring and pull it out. And make sure you get a high, I got a decent quality one too. I got one one time that where the tips were, uh, I think they were plastic, anyway, or not plastic, but a really cheap metal. And I ended up bending them before I could even get the C-rings out. So keep that in mind if you've got one of those types of chairs. And if you have questions about your specific type, uh, just comment or shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to try to help you out. So now we're going to take the screwdriver that I talked about and you'll put it through the hole or the, the bottom bearing and you'll push it up against the back of the top one here and then we're just going to take our hammer and we're going to tap them out. Now you probably will ruin the bearing like it'll break through the plastic on the bottom but that's okay because the bearings are shot anyways. Um, and if they're really, you'll have to kind of work your way around because um, if you hit just on one spot, it's going to make the bearing 
twist in there and then you won't be able to get it out. So make sure you kind of tap one side then tap the other and you just check to see where your progress is at. If they're really stubborn and you can't get them out, um, one kind of trick of the trade is take your wife or your girlfriend's hair dryer and turn it on high and plug it in and just hold it here um, for a couple of minutes or if you have a heat gun but just be careful with the heat gun because you don't want to get the metal too hot. Um, but anyway, most of the chairs are aluminum and if you heat it up the aluminum expands uh, and then those bearings slide out a lot easier. So we got the top one out finally, and hopefully the bottom one will come a little bit easier. Uh, same thing, but now he's got more room to work with. So, so yeah, we'll try to tap this one out. The second one always comes easier. So, now they're both out, you can see in there. Um, what I'll do just to make sure that all the gunk is gone is take a little bit of steel wool. Uh, this isn't very a very aggressive grade, but I'll just uh, rub it in there because there is salt and stuff in there from the seasoned dirt uh, and stuff like that. So. That way when you put the new ones in, they go in a little bit smoother and then if you would have to ever get them out, hopefully it prevents some of the stuff we just went through. So, The other thing I'm going to do before we put stuff back together is I'm going to take the caster fork stem. You can see it's pretty rusty here uh, and got some corrosion on it. So I'm just going to take the, you won't be able to get all of it off, but I'm going to take the, um, the steel wool and just try to scrape as much of that off as we can. Keep it smooth and keep things uh, flowing smoothly and stop and it prevents the chair from seizing up as much. So it's a little bit better. Got some of the grease and gunk off of it, um, but we'll lay that aside for now. And now it's time to put the new uh, the new bearings in. So uh, to do that, we'll do let's do the the bottom one first. Um, so you take the bottom one and you're just gonna lay it in there. And the bottom one for this chair in particular, you might actually be able to just push it in with your thumb. If you can't get it all the way in, like, I don't know if you can see, but there, it's not all in all the way right now, and I can't push it any further. This is important. Um, we're going to take our hammer, but don't hit the bearing with the hammer directly because you could dent it or, or nick it. So that's when we're going to take our rig. You just lay that over like that. and gently tap it in and don't just hit right in the middle try to go around the edges uh, so that it seats in level and you don't get a crooked bearing because they're really hard to get back out of you have to redo this so that bottom one's all the way in uh, it's not coming out I can press on it with my finger and you want to make sure those are, are nice and solid in there so you don't want them falling out uh, when when you're pushing down the street so uh, next we'll do the top one so I flip the chair over, and this one, uh, depending on how easy or hard it's going to slide in, you might have to use the hammer again. So I push it in, but it's not supposed to be that high up in the housing. So what we're going to do, because uh, on this one there's a lip, the lip is the actual housing, so you have to be able to push it into there. So we're going to take the hammer, and then if you have the the ratchet head that you used so you don't want to use this end mm -hmm. but you do but use the back end where it's a little bit flatter and it's got some more metal um, and set that on there and then you're just gonna again lightly tap the edges until it seats all the way in and you can kind of eye it you get a pretty good idea once you've done this a couple times about how far down it should be uh, usually, like for this, I know it's a down far enough when it's seated in and and uh, I could get like another 
thickness of a bearing in there if I, uh, and that's, that's about how far it should be down. So that one's good in there now. And now we just have to put the, the caster back on. So we'll take our ratchet head again. And our, the stem. Tighten it down. And it, it feels a little sticky to me right now. Actually, that actually feels pretty good. Um, maybe back off. You can feel it if it's too if it feels too sticky. Just um, back the nut off just a little bit until you feel it flow smoothly. So just to get an idea, if you listen carefully, there's no noise there. And this one, which you haven't changed yet, you can hear. So that's how you can kind of tell too. You can feel when your bearings are going out, you can also hear it too. So that's what you want, you want that smooth, quiet roll, and then that's what they sound like when they're starting to go. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions uh, about your specific chair or about something I did here today, uh, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video, and we'll see you on the next Adapted Adventures.